I want to call the December 15th, 2016 meeting of the Ascension Parish Council to order. Would everyone please stand for the invocation and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Come on, Father, come here. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, as we approach the day of your son's birth and our salvation, we ask that everyone look to the left and look to their right and look to their neighbors and see what they can do to help as we still have scores of people out of their homes and people waiting on assistance and trying to work with what they got in front of them we ask that you keep everybody safe and warm we ask that you bring everyone through this christmas holiday and this season with joyful memories of family gatherings and healthy we ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Madam Secretary, please note that uh, on roll call that uh, Councilman Doc Sadley is absent. Councilman Turner's absent. Councilman Dempsey Lamberts had to work. And Councilman Bill Dawson is at a DEQ um, public hearing in Sorrento uh, that was somehow scheduled on the same night as our meeting. He can't make it. Tonight we have no chair of additions. Anyone wishing to speak? On the agenda item, please sign up with the secretary and you'll be given time when that item comes up. We'll move into the parish president's report. And first, we have a resolution to allow parish employees to carry over vacation hours in excess of 360 to the year 2017 due to the 2016 state of emergency in Ascension Parish. Mr. President. Uh, Council, um I had gotten a call from Bill Rue. Uh, you know, a while back what we did, we uh, afforded all of the uh, impacted uh, employees to cash out on their vacations to help them with uh, all of their losses. And uh, Bill had a couple guys that, was, that he would like to continue doing some projects that wanted to take off. And so when he came to me, um, I looked at it that uh, I think Bill had five, and uh, all together it would be like 31 people. So uh, what I'm, I'm asking you guys to do is to give them the 12 months of next year to use the vacation that's, that's over 360 for this year because of the impacted uh, situation. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Cazzo, second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? Any objection? Just to make clear, Parish President, we're talking about that we're just going to let them go over the limits this year due to the impact. We've been working for about four and a half months straight. And, yes, sir. And um, hopefully that they can they can burn that down between now and the end of well, the They got 12 months to use it plus whatever they got coming up. And so each department, you know, just got to kind of regulate the vacations. You know, you don't want everybody taking off at one time. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Todd Lamb. Yeah, yeah, Parish President, I did get some calls from a couple of employees that was looking at they weren't aware. I think when when we act, allowed the ones that flooded to cash it in, I think some that didn't flood cashed in also. Is that true? Now you see, I, I can't tell you that. I just said okay. I, I can't. If you asked if they could cash it in and, instead of carry over, I don't know what's your take on that. Well, you know when when I went to y'all, it was about to. It was about the people that got impacted with right. uh, I, really I had some of them call, cars. Yeah. We said not just houses, cars, or, or even if you had a, a tractor or whatever. And so I, I, didn't, I don't know if anybody cashed out that okay. didn't have any damage. I don't know that. Okay. But when Bill came to me, it was about some projects he's got going on, and, and he, didn't, he wanted them to work them, but he didn't want them to lose their time. So... That's when I thought about it and put together. I got with finance, and I said, can you all set it up where they got used 12 months to take this, these extra hours? And yeah. that's what I came up with that, unless you all want to change something. So it's basically clear it's a temporary resolution. Yes, sir. To the policy. Any other I didn't questions? know if y'all had any input from any of y'all employees. Through. I, d I didn't have any other. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, now, Bill had talked to me, and that was the only one. Okay. All right. All right. Wait, hold you. on one second. Thank you. The, the only concern they had is that uh, they, uh, they were going to lose vacation time. And to keep from losing the time, they said, well, I'm gonna go, we, we're going to go ahead and take off. And then all of a sudden, I'm already shorthanded, and we need to, to uh, keep working on some projects and some things. And they said, we don't mind keep working, uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to lose time if we do. So that's when we went to the parish president, and we came up with this solution. And I was just thinking, what, next year you're going to have some, you know, you're going to be losing with all that vacation carrying over, and if they take it all, you're going to be shorthanded quite a bit. Well, again, too. in our department, it's not that many. Okay. Okay. Overall, there's a quite a many. But but again, we have the whole year to schedule it. We're going to yeah. take care of that first part of the year to make sure that it's everybody's scheduled throughout the year. Okay. Sounds good. And as always, we ask every department head and administration to manage that. Right. In, in my level one and two meeting, I'm going to stress this quickly, but uh, no one can take vacation without the supervisor's approval. Any other questions? Any opposition? That motion passed. You got anything else on your parish president? Uh, just one more thing. Uh, I want. I still want the uh, the, the citizens to know that uh, if they if they had a letter in any way, shape, or form that need any assistance with their homes, anything we can do for them, uh, I'm gonna bring up Jerome right now to explain to you about another set of letters that that are going out and what they're, what they're saying. But they still got people that don't realize if they can appeal or whatever. And, and so well, I want them to know they, well, we, what, we're here to help well, them. We, we need to ask people to contact their councilman for sure, that, that we, can, we can try to key in and try to help somebody however they can. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, Mr. Mr. Jerome. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the council, um, as uh, uh, President Matassa just said, we're in the process right now of sending out all the letters to properties that have been evaluated but have not been substantially damaged. And this was per year request and per the request of Mr. Uh, Mr. Matassa. Um, these are properties that were below 50% evaluation. Those properties continue with their life after they repair their house. They don't have to do anything more uh, to their houses, but we wanted to inform them of that because they had people coming to their homes doing an evaluation, they were curious about what that evaluation was. So we're getting those letters out to the population right now, and there are approximately 5,500 of those letters, right. right? Real quick, Jerome, anywhere on the letter does it basically have a statement that this is a for FYI only type of thing, that you, there's no need to? Yeah, it, it does say that, okay. yeah, Mr. Chairman, yeah. It gives, no the letters are needed. personalized, it's not a form letter. So every, every letter has been addressed to a particular property mm -hmm. owner. It's in a window envelope. And it also has their percent damage on the letter. So if it's 45% or 27%, that number is listed in there. And it also gives them the information that they can continue on. They don't have to do anything special to their house. Right. I, I just want to let everybody know that, uh, that, you know, we, that I've had a lot of people over the past couple of months and you know that we've been in your office and things like that, and mm -hmm. Todd and a couple of, you know, most of every council member here that are people just wanting to know. Exactly. And that, you know, we yeah. appreciate that that if they were 27%, you know right. what I mean? That, right. that you went ahead and let them know, hey, this is where you stand, this is what we got. Yeah, and we're still fielding phone calls daily from yes. people. And uh, we have, we still have the hotline. We changed the hotline a little bit, and there's a, a number one button, a number two button. You can get different information on it. So uh, we're requesting if they want some more detailed information, come into the office or talk with um, Lance or Marcy or anybody else who can help them, All right? No, sir. All right, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Jerome? Uh, Mr. John. I got a question for the parish president. Just quickly, uh, we saw the announcement about the debris removal. Is it gonna be suspended for the holidays and then continued in January? Is that the way it works? Okay, uh, I, I just wanted to make sure because I got a couple of calls. Yeah. People were wanting to know if they still had debris from, yeah, yeah that it shows up. Right. People are just now getting yes. to their houses, some of them. All right, OEP Director Rick Weber. You they, want to feel that one? Yeah, I'll, I'll address it. They're going to continue to the 22nd of December and take a two week break after that and then come back and allow the residents to continue to push debris to the right of way over that time period and then come back in uh, the first week in January for the final pass throughout the parish. 
but primarily what they're focusing on is is the right of entry forms that the residents have already filled out and so they're going directly <coughs> to the residents that we know have debris so we're trying to wrap it up by mid-January to get that complete. Okay. Okay. I think it was till 22nd or something like that of January. It mid-January. I don't have the something exact like date that. with me, but it mid-January, end of January. Well, I've been telling them to go get that right-of-way letter if they have any debris on their on That's, their that's exactly road. what we need to tell them. So if okay. you could, just let them know. Go to room 105, Parish Administration Building, and see the Tetra Tech representative there and fill out a right of entry form. That's what I Hey, Rick, Thank real you. quick on that, and that's the most calls I'm getting right now. Right. Is the people that have been having debris sitting there for a good long while. Exactly. And in right places, now, small roads and back places and things like that that's not on the main drag. And I know y'all concentrate, and I've talked to you, you're concentrating on that. Right. But I have had a couple people tell me that they went to the parish and that they were told to go to FEMA. Mm. So they may have... You know, it depends on how somebody asks a question. I don't know how the front desk responds, you know, but so you still got the room right there. Right. It's, it's still there. And, and, what, and what I just want to make the residents aware of is that last week we split the efforts. We, we got approval from FEMA and we coordinated with state DOTD that we mm -hmm. can start picking up some of the debris on state highways. So we, the, the forces that we got going out now, half are picking up state roads uh, with right of entry forms mm -hmm. on, on extended private property and the other half are going to state roads. So we all work in both areas. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sure. Todd. Lyman. Yeah, one, one quick mm -hmm. I know a lot of homes are getting, you know, d demoed and pushed to the road to now and a later. You know, I guess after they all said and done, they know they got to tear them down. So I'm seeing several in my district. That's all. The whole house is a pile to the road right now. So. Right. If if the if they demolish the house and they push it to the road, it's going to be disqualified. If there's if there's roofing in there. I will personally go out to every area if I need to, along with, with Kermit Kramer from Tetra Tech, and we will tell them what it takes to get that qualified. But we're not in the in the house demolition business. Okay. We're not picking up demolished houses. It's that's two on Bay MLC, Rick. I'll go. To, I'll check it out personally, and, road. and and I'll let them know. And and what it takes to get that debris qualified, we'll let them know how to do that. Okay. And we'll pick up what we can, but we, we just cannot pick up a demolished home. Because they got it piled in the ditches, and I'm you know we got our rainy yeah. season coming, and I'm kind of worried about you know that's a, that's an area that's got a flooding area. I understand. You know, and, and everything's in the ditch. Okay. You know. I'll look at it, but just to be aware that a mobile home is not a is FEMA doesn't consider that a, a, a home. They consider it debris. So they can push a whole mobile home out there and they'll still pick it up. Yeah. But that's where we're at. Any other questions on debris? Thank, Thank you, you, Rick. All right. Anything else, Parish President, on your report? Uh, that's all I have. I just want to tell everybody Merry Christmas and have Happy New Year's and a safe one. Thank you. Move on to agenda item number six, the consent agenda A, change order number three, HMGP 1603X-022-0085, Lamar Dixon Expo Center Wind Retrofit Project, additional $10,162 to J. Reed Contractors Contract, new contract amount to be $2,477,375. Item B, approval of professional service agreement with with Arbitrage Group Incorporated in the amount of $2,500 for the calculation of arbitrage earnings for the East Ascension Consolidated Gravity Drainage District Number 1 Project Series 2007. Agenda Item C, bid items to accept the lowest responsive bid as follows, Limestone Number 57, <coughs> Number 89 and 610, Vulcan Materials, Bridge materials and, and round timber piles, MCM Lumber Company, Pump Sand and River Silt, Cheryl Moran Incorporated, $10 per yard. Altern, alternate number one picked up, $5.50, $5.50. Shavings, <coughs> green cottonwood and white shavings, SNS forms, $4.25 per bag. D. Contract renewals for 2017 per the attached list. Chair would entertain a motion to accept the consent so agenda. We have a motion by Mr. Cagnolotti, second by Ms. Cazzo. Any objection? Any discussion? Motion carries. We'll move along to agenda item number seven, general business. Approval amendment number two to professional services contract ACUD 1. 
free chlorine burn treatment and chloramine booster station, not to exceed $2,000. Total amount of the contract shall not exceed $72,000. So moved. Second. So motion by <coughs> Mr. Joseph, second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes. We'll move to agenda item number eight, approval of amendment number one to the master contract for professional services, Lowry, Lowry Park Fence Project, not to exceed $1,402. Total amount of contract not to exceed $14,607. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Joseph. Second. Second by Mr. Kagenlager. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes. We move on to agenda item number nine. Request for quote, mosquito control office billing repairs. Ms. Jones Shivers. Um, December 8, 2016, the purchasing department received five quotes for the mosquito control office repairs, flood 816. After review, the Purchasing Department and the Office of Homeland Security, who acted as the project managers, recommend accepting the lowest responsive quote submitted by Veterans Construction, including their alternate number one, and to authorize the parish president to begin contract negotiations for this project. What's the amount of that? The budget was 149000 the low bid from the lowest bid was from expert maintenance, but they did not address alternate number one, so it was deemed non-responsive. We moved on to veterans construction, one hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars, and the alternate number one was twenty-two hundred dollars. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert, second, second by Mr. Kagenlock. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you. Miss Jones. We'll move on to uh, introduction of ordinances, introduction of an ordinance to revoke the, an existing 15-foot drainage servitude located on the northern portion of lots A-2-A-1 and A-2-A-2 and A-2-A-3 of the Danton Bruce Development LLC property and to revoke an existing 15-foot drainage servitude located on the southern portion of track Y of the Danton Bruce Development LLC <coughs> property. Move to council via UDC 17.4050 D2A. Motion to introduce, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion introduced mm -hmm. by Mr. Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Mr. Kagenlock. Any objection? It's introduced. We move to agenda item number 11, introduction of ordinance to revoke an existing 12-foot utility servitude located across portions of lot A-2-A-1 and A-2-A-2 and A-2-B-1 of the Danton Bruce LLC property. Move to the council via UDC 17.4050 B2A. Motion to introduce. We have a motion introduced by Ms. Cazzo. Second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any objection? Introduced. We'll move to agenda item number 12, introduction of ordinances to revoke an existing seven and one half foot servitude located on the eastern boundary of track A1 of the Danton Bruce Development LLC property. Move to the council agenda via UDC 17.4050 B2A. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Joseph. Second. Second by Ms. Cazzo. Any objection? <laughs> Moved. We'll move into our public hearings. Uh, agenda item number 13, reading of ordinance to amend the Ascension Parish zoning map from mixed use to small plan unit development located on the west side of LA 73 north of Southwood Village. Avenue, lot A-1 for Cloverdale subdivisions for Craig Smith. Mr. It's ordinance amends the official zoning designation of lot A-1 of Cloverdale subdivision for mixed use two to small plan unit development to rezone its identified as zoning review ID 
PZ 1075.16, Lot A1 of the Cloverdale Subdivision, where is the Central Treasury Local Government Subdivision defined by Article 6, Section 44, Louisiana Constitution 1974, where is the parish extension of the governing responsible body of the zoning and regulation of goods and jurisdiction? Whereas Article 6 of the Home Charter of Ascension Parish adopted May 4th, 1993, benefits processing managers adopt ordinances regulating the lands of the parish. Whereas the official zoning map of Ascension Parish last adopted May, March 8th, 2016. Whereas the parish reserves the authority to make changes to the official zoning map by ordinance. This request has been processed and complies with the procedures set forth. The ordained the Ascension Parish Governing Authority, the official zoning map of Ascension Parish is amended to reflect the property identified. Exhibit A is small plan unit development at the official zoning designation. In the event any portion of the ordinance is ever held invalid or unconstitutional for any reason by any <coughs> court of competent jurisdiction over such portion shall be deemed separate, distinct, and independent provision and shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions of the ordinance. This ordinance shall be in effect as permitted by law. The exhibits of the legal description, the plat map, the aerial zoning map, the ordinance have been submitted to a vote. The vote thereon was as follows. Shall we entertain a motion of public hearing? Mr. Todd Lambert got the motion. Second. Mr. Gagnolotti got the second. Motion to close. We have a motion to close public hearing by Mr. Joseph, second by Mr. Todd Lambert. The chair would entertain a motion to move the ordinance. So moved. We have a motion second. by Ms. Terry Caswell, second by Mr. Cagnolotti. Any discussion? Any opposition? Okay. Motion carries. We move to agenda item number 16, reading of ordinance to amend the Ascension Parish zoning map to rezone the property located on the east side of Hodgson Road, approximately 500 feet south <coughs> of LA Highway 30 from Rural to Crossroads Commercial for Kenny's Reynolds LLC. Mr. Parrington, Micro would you pull the microphone down, sir? Thank you. This ordinance amends the official zoning designation of track C1B from Rural to Crossroads Commercial. This rezone is identified as zoning review ID PZ 1074.16 track C1B of the boundary survey of lot C1A and C1B, whereas the Central Parish Local Governing Subdivision is defined by Article 6, Section 44 of the Louisiana Constitution, 1974, whereas the Parish of Ascension is the governing and responsible body over the zoning and regulations within the jurisdiction, whereas Article 6 of the Home Group Charter at Central Parish adopted May 4, 1993, identifies the process and manner to which to adopt ordinances regulating the lands of this parish. Whereas the official zoning map of the parish was last adopted March 8, 2016. <laughs> Whereas the parish council reserves the authority to make changes to the official zoning map by ordinance. This request has been processed in compliance with the procedure set forth. Be it ordained the central parish governing authority, the official zoning map of the parish of uh, Louisiana is amended to reflect the property identified exhibit A as commercial cross, crossroad commercial as the official zoning designation. In the event any portion of this ordinance is ever held invalid or unconstitutional by, for any reason by any court of competent jurisdiction over it, such portion shall be deemed Separate, distinct, and independent provisions shall not affect the validity of remaining portions of the ordinance. The ordinance shall be in full effect submitted by law. The exhibits are the legal description, the plat map, the area of zoning map. This ordinance has been submitted to a vote. The vote thereon was as follows. Motion. Open we have a motion open public hearing by Mr. Todd Lambert, second. second by Mr. Benny Johnson. Motion to close. We have second. Motion to close by Mr. Joseph, second by Ms. Cazzo. Move, Chair, we entertain a motion. A motion on the rule of the ordinance by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Joseph. Any opposition, any discussion? The ordinance passes. We'll move on to agenda item number 19, reading of ordinance to revoke an existing 15-foot servitude located across the middle of lots CJ-1-A-1 of the Joseph Sanchez, Patrick Sanchez, Carolyn Pyron, Barbara Young, John Sanchez, and Beatrice Burke property. Mr. Mr. Parrington. To revoke an existing 15-foot drainage servitude located in the middle of lot CJ1A1 of the Joseph Sanchez, Patrick Sanchez, Carolyn Paron, Barbara Young, John Sanchez, and Beatrice Burke, Beatrice Burke property. The property is depicted on a plat map prepared by William T. Fiesel for Clarence J. Sanchez, dated 11, January 11, 2005. Whereas petitioners petitioning the Central Parish Council to revoke an existing drainage servitude on lot CJ1A1 of the Joseph Sanchez, Patrick Sanchez, Carolyn Paron, Barbara Young, John Sanchez, and Beatrice Burke property. The property is depicted on a plat map prepared by William T. Fiesel for Clarence J. Sanchez, dated January 11, 2005. Whereas the Planning Department, Engineering Department, and all utility companies have re reviewed and researched said request and have no objection to the revocation and relocation. Parish of Ascension hereby ordains that it grants approval of revocation of existing drainage servitude on lot CJ1A1 of Joseph Sanchez, Patrick Sanchez, Carolyn Paron, Barbara Young, John Sanchez, and Beatrice Burke property. The property is depicted on a plat map prepared by William T. Fiesel 
for Clarence J. Sanchez, dated January 11, 2005, attached here to and made a part hereof as Exhibit A. All ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby henceforth repealed in the event any ordinances are held invalid. Uh, such invalid shall not affect the provisions herein, which shall be given full effect without the invalid provisions. To this effect, the provisions of the ordinance are hereby declared severable. The ordinance had been submitted to a vote. The vote thereon was as follows. This ordinance shall be effective 15 days after adoption. Motion, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion to open public hearing by Mr. Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Ms. Cazzo. Motion to close. Second. Motion to close by Mr. Johnson. Second by Mr. Joseph. Move the ordinance. We have a motion to move the ordinance Second. by Mr. Todd Lambert. Second by Mr. Cazzo. I'm sorry, Ms. Cazzo. Second <laughs> by Mr. Cagnolotti. <laughs> you or Benny, which one? Either one. Either one. We'll take it. <laughs> Trying to move fast, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passed. Mr. Chairman, before we move forward, I just want to ask a question and clarify. I've mentioned before, this one was not a relocation, although it said it in there. We didn't have to. But when, an, sub, when a servitude is being relocated, I don't think we have to have an ordinance, but we've been continuing to do it. I just want to, if you all are comfortable with it, I don't think we need to do a, uh, an ordinance every time we relocate a servitude. I just want to when get the council. When we revoke a servitude, you talked when about that When we revoke it, so we need to, but just relocating we or removing relocate. it, I don't think we need an ordinance. Because we relocated several of them. Yeah. All right. So well, I'm going to start taking those off. Well, we're just relocating servitudes. I'm, we're not going to, I'm, well, I'm if that's okay legal, with y'all. We're not going to be, we don't need an ordinance. If that's legal and ethical, yes. we'll move forward into 2017. Yes. Remind us at the next meeting. Yes. Before we move on to item number 22, I want to thank my fellow council members. Thank y'all for a good year of sticking tough. Okay. We, uh, we got a long road in front of us. I uh, hope that everybody gets to celebrate some portion of the joy of Christmas season and and work together. What we do is I, uh, we have the challenges in front of us on 2017. We have a lot of work that we've been working on for several years that's still, still in the tilt that we need to get straight. And uh, 2017 will be a challenging year. We have a lot of things that are, that are gonna hit the fire and come around. So I ask that everybody Continue to work together, continue with respect, and continue with patience. And uh, last but definitely not least, I want to thank all the staff, everybody from every department that makes these meetings happen and that answer the questions that we want to know that scores of papers couldn't tell us. They're simple explanation. It's a good thing. And uh, we appreciate y'all hanging in with us every night, every time we have a committee meeting council meeting, special meeting, whatever. And uh, once again, Merry Christmas to all. <coughs> Move to adjourn. We have a motion by Mr. Kagenlotti to adjourn. Second. And Merry Christmas. Second by Ms. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And we are adjourned. That's it.